we're going to begin a uh, probably challenging chapter. So I'm going to take it really slow and build up uh, step by step um, the concept of activity-based costing, ABC. The first thing you should know is this is not a replacement to job costing or process costing. You'll continue on with that. This is a supplement, not a replacement. It's a supplement to the costing system. It rarely is used when process costing is used. It's primarily used when job costing is used, and it's not always useful. So I'll get to that later on, just so that you know that it's not... It's not the end-all and be-all. It's not the newest, greatest flavor. It's something that may add value. It's used for internal purposes only. And I know much of managerial accounting is said to be only internal. But the costs derived from that process are used in external reporting. The costs derived from activity-based costing are not used in external reporting at all. They're not useful for that at all. They're only useful for clarifying decisions. That's it. So let's look at the difference between ABC and traditional costing, just so that you have sort of some grasp of where we're going here. You'll recall that up to now we've been pushing the, the idea that of the manufacturing costs, direct material, direct labors, direct labor, sorry, and manufacturing overhead. Uh, these are product costs versus what we call non-manufacturing costs, selling expense, admin expense, which are called period costs, and we've been keeping those separate. So when we determine our cost of goods manufactured, our cost of goods sale, sold, all of those things, the value of our inventory, etc., we're really only focused on the manufacturing costs, the non-manufacturing costs, the period costs we just ignore. Well, ABC doesn't do that. ABC says both can be product costs. That's step one. Both can be. In other words, some of these non-manufacturing costs, ABC argues that, wait a minute here, if you weren't doing that particular product, you wouldn't incur this particular non-manufacturing cost, so it really is a cost of making that product, isn't it? So, we can think of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, where overhead is split into indirect manufacturing costs, which is the standard definition of overhead. That's manufacturing overhead altogether. But can also consist of non-manufacturing costs. And here's the test. Whether we include a cost in overhead under ABC is based on a cause and effect basis only. In other words, if an activity can be seen to have caused a cost, it's included. But if an activity does not cause the cost to happen, whether it's manufacturing or non-manufacturing, it's not included. More on that later. Manufacturing costs under our traditional system, 100% of these manufacturing costs were assigned 100% of the manufacturing costs are assigned. So <clears throat> when we incur actual overhead expenses, we allocate those overhead expenses to jobs or departments, etc. But they all get allocated. Under ABC, that may not be the case. 100% of the manufacturing costs may not be allocated. So the difference in number one says that non-manufacturing costs can be included. The difference in number two says that some of the manufacturing costs do not have to be included. Only on a cause and effect basis, therefore, some manufacturing overhead will be treated as a period expense, not a product expense under ABC. Now, that is not valid for external reporting. You can't do that for external reporting. All production costs must be captured in inventory. You can't pick and choose which ones you want, and you can't bring in non-manufacturing costs in inventory. That's why ABC is only useful for internally generated statements. So let me give you a sort of a broad example here. Let's say that your plant is running at 80% capacity. 80% <clears throat> of the capacity is used for production. Well, then all of the costs of that production would be considered a product cost. 
if you're running your plant at 80% capacity, all that capacity must be making something, hence it would be a product cost. 20% is unused or idle. Well, that's unused capacity that would not be included in any product because there's no activity associated with it. That would then be classified as a period cost under ABC accounting. Just to make better decisions, certainly not to report that number. Let's go on to the third difference. This is probably a, a big difference and <clears throat> conceptually a little uh, difficult to look at. So let's go through the steps really slow. Recall in job costing, we have a manufacturing overhead account where we record actual costs as debits, and then we apply those costs to jobs based on some predetermined overhead rate. And that predetermined overhead rate could be direct labor hours, or the basis of it could be on direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, machine hours. We've already seen these. That's an activity, hours, dollars, machine hours, these are activities in which we apply all of the overhead to products. We refer to those as the allocation base. So direct labor hours is the allocation base. Under process costing, <clears throat> you'll recall that each department had its own manufacturing overhead account. So we have manufacturing overhead for department one, you have manufacturing overhead for department two, and we'll do another one, manufacturing overhead for department three. And we did the same thing here that we did in job costing when recording and applying costs. Actual costs in each department are recorded as debits, and then those actual costs are applied to the units in process using, again, a predetermined overhead rate, even though it's process accounting, we'll still use a predetermined overhead rate. The important thing here is that 100% of the costs incurred are applied to units, 100%. All of them, all the manufacturing costs are applied to units on the basis of and again, for each of, for each of the uh, departments that apply overhead, it applies it on the basis of <clears throat> some allocation base. Direct labor hours, we've seen. Direct labor dollars, machine hours, we've all seen those. We refer to these as cost drivers. This allocation base, we refer to them as cost drivers because that's what drives the cost. At least that's what we believe drives the cost of overhead is the number of labor hours incurred. We can also think of those as activity cost drivers because it's that activity that drives the cost. I'm moving you one step closer to activity-based costing. I've introduced the word activity. We understand where that word activity sits now. It refers to these, this allocation base. Now under ABC, an activity is any event that requires overhead expense, any event that requires overhead expense. We've seen in post-job costing and process costing above, we've de determined direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, and machine hours as activities that drive the overhead cost. With ABC, we start to identify even more of these types of activities, more of these events. And we use something called an activity cost pool. You can think of an activity cost pool as a manufacturing overhead account for an activity. I'm not saying it is a manufacturing overhead account. Be clear, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying you can think of it in that term so that when we look at process costing with a different manufacturing overhead uh, uh, um, T account for each department, you can conceive of each activity uh, having a different manufacturing overhead account. That Think of that as the activity cost pool and the allocation base that we apply the overhead on is the number of the activity, whatever that activity is. So it's a manufacturing overhead for a particular activity. Whatever that activity happens to be, we count the number of that activity. So rather than recording actual costs, costs are assigned to the cost pool first. And then once they're assigned to the cost pool, they are allocated to each unit within the activity. We're going to get to what's called stage one and stage two allocation in this, in this uh, lecture. So that's how that works. The activity is either a transaction type of activity, 
In other words, how many of something was made or how many of something was done, or it's a duration driver, either a transaction or a duration driver. A duration means, well, for how long? So it may be instead of direct labor hours, we count the amount of minutes it takes to do a particular task. If it's, if it's uh, uh, units being made, how many units are being made? So transactions or duration. Now, by duration is the more accurate counting how many minutes it takes to do every single piece of, of a task to get something done. It's more accurate, but it's more expensive to track. And it has some kind of negative, negative side effects as well. So, uh, transaction drivers tend to be the most popular one. There's an old joke under ABC Accounting that if you want to lower your costs, just get management to stop thinking about the product for a while. <laughs> you get that? If you're counting it by the amount of time they spend on a task, if they just stop thinking about the product, well, all of a sudden your costs, your overhead costs will drop for that product. Um, anyways, let's keep going.